Hi everybody, Steve from Steve's Makerspace. We are in P5JS and I've got a few more variations I've created in my flow packing art maker. In one variation, instead of placing objects everywhere, I'm limiting the placement of rectangles and petals. I also have a variation of this limited flow that adds a pearl and noise field to the background layers and the circles. Then for the packing, I've got an option to make the shapes overlap instead of being spaced apart. And then I've got an option that doesn't do packing at all, but just uses the flow fields. And finally, there's a version that adds quads to the background, which didn't work out so well. Links to all of this code is in the video description and you can play with these in your browser. First, I'll show you the programs in action, and then a little while later, I'll get into the changes I've made to the code. Now, I know I've been doing this flow packing thing for a while. I am going to put this to bed and just move on to something else. But I wanted to show you these last variations that I've come up with. For the variations in flow and packing, I've incorporated that into the code I had before. So what you're seeing right now is the sort of art that was being created before. So it still does this, but now you can change this to limited flow and it'll do something like this and this. And then uh, we can go back to regular flow and we've got the regular packing. Let's do overlap packing and usually it's better to get rid of the tree. So let's do no tree for this. And rectangles work a little bit better than the petals for the overlap packing. Let's try taking the circles out and no layers as well. And let's also do small instead. All right, and we get this and this one. This was this is pretty nice. And then, of course, we can add grain to this and then save JPEG. So that looks pretty nice. Then we can do no packing at all. Let's try that one. So we've got that. We'll do new art. And that looks pretty nice. I like that one. That's pretty interesting. And let's try the petals with the no packing. And these kind of look like sweaters, I think. Maybe some kind of fabric. That one looks pretty nice. Now we can do a limited flow with the no packing or the overlap packing. It looks sometimes a little odd. Uh, let's try the rectangles. And maybe we'll add back the circles and the layers. That one's not too bad. So that is the limited flow and the overlap packing and the no packing. This is the code with flow with quads. Don't know that it's very successful. Let's try a few more. So it's kind of interesting, but uh, I don't really like the way it looks as far as art goes. Let's try smaller shapes. So not all of the experiments are gonna work out, but you gotta try. That one looks kind of nice. And then finally, here is the piece that does limited flow with a pearl and noise of background and layers and circles. Uh, and this one is kind of nice. Let's try a new art and we'll do new art again and we'll do it again. Now this one is a lot slower than the other one. The other one renders in about one second. This one takes about 10 seconds, so an extra nine seconds of rendering. And it's because of these pearl and noise fields that are quite large. But some of the renders are kind of interesting. I like it. So there's three pieces of code here. There's one for the pearl and noise stuff. There's one with the quads. And then there's the one that has everything else. Now I'm about to start showing the code. I know I'll lose a few of you. So if you've liked this video so far, you think this is cool, please give it a like. Now I won't be going over the code from scratch. I've done three previous videos talking about this flow packing stuff. So I'll leave links to those videos in the video description if you wanna go check those out. For changing the flow from regular to limited flow, uh, having fewer objects being placed on the canvas, First, I've got a new resolution for Pearl and Noise because I'm using Pearl and Noise to determine whether it's going to be placed or not. Let me switch over briefly to an example piece. This is a Pearl and Noise field, and I've got the noise that's being produced split up into three different sections. So there's one section is doing all reds, and that is if the noise is less than 0.45. And then I've got the blues, 
which is if the noise is greater than 0.58. And then I've got the greens, which is if the noise is between 0.45 and 0.58. Let me hit play a few times. And you'll notice there's a band here. And there, here's another one with a band. And so this is going to happen more often that there'll be like a streak or a band uh, if you're looking at the middle part of the noise. So these, the red and the blue, are the ends of the noise, either low noise or high noise. So when I'm doing my limited flow, I'm placing the objects in this band. So going back to the code, I've got the resolution for that new Perlin noise. Then in the code where it's trying to place objects, it calculates the noise for that limited, uh, whether it's going to place or not place. And then it's got an if statement, whether the noise is in that range that we want for it to be placing objects. There's also a random chance, a very small chance, 0.2 out of 100, that it'll place objects on the canvas randomly. Uh, and also that those random objects that it's going to be placing are going to be on the small side. Now besides just limiting the placement, I've also got something going on where I'm trying to get these to flow along these bands. Uh, it's not always successful, but it is like right here, it's flowing along the band, and right here it's flowing along the band. So the areas of rotation are being created in the high noise or the low noise, so that these hopefully will be flowing around that noise. So this one probably has an area of rotation right here. There's not a lot of things being placed because of the limit, but that's why these are flowing around like this, because there's an area of rotation right here. Now we still have Perl and noise determining some of the flow, so that's why some of these are not flowing along the bands. So here's one that probably has an area of rotation right here. So back to the code, I've got this section here, limit flow to the high and low noise values. And so it's creating uh, five different areas of rotation, uh, top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right, and the center of the screen. And we're coming up with noise values for each of those centers of rotation. But then we're saying if the center of rotation is in the high or the low, then we do want that to influence uh, the flow. And if it's not in that high or low, then we're not going to have it influence the flow. Now there's also one other thing that's happening. Uh, last time I said I dispensed with the percent of rotation that's happening. In other words, is it is that area of rotation influencing the rotation a lot or only a little bit? Um, so I dispensed with it last time, but now I've added it back in. Uh, so it's going to be between 50% or 100% influencing the rotation. And then down here where it's coming up with the final angle, it's adding the Perla noise angle. And then each center of rotation, the angle that it's come up with times the percent that it's come up with. And the angle might be zero if it's not going to be coming into play at all, then this might just be zero times that rotation percentage. And this is going to be calculated for each rectangle or petal. What is the angle of rotation of that rectangle or petal? Next, let's talk about the packing. We've got uh, a pack type that I've created. And so that's going to be pack type 0, 1, or 2. 0 is regular packing, 1 is overlap packing, and 2 is no packing at all. So in the part where it is checking the rectangle to see whether it's going to fit in that area, right, I've got the check rectangle function being called here. Uh, well, above that, I've got if the pack type is 2, no packing, then we're just going to skip this. So it's only going to do this if pack type is either 0 or 1. And then if the pack type is the overlap packing, we're first going to take the height and the width and divide by 2 so that when it checks the rectangle, it's going to check a very small rectangle. And then after I've done the checking, then I'm going to 
put the height and the width back to what it was before. So I multiply by two. So that way it checks for a small space for a rectangle and then it makes a larger rectangle and that's how I get the overlap. But in any of those cases, whether it's doing regular packing, overlap packing, or no packing, it is going to look at the canvas at the color that exists right there right now and make sure that that color, uh, the new color that it's going to try to place there is not the same as the color that's currently on the canvas. And then also if the pack type is one or two, um, I've got no stroke. I've got a little bit of alpha if it's doing the overlap packing and I've got a lot of alpha if it's doing the no packing. And this is the section where it's checking the color uh, to make sure that the color is not the same and it's not close, the color that's on the canvas versus the color it's trying to place. Now moving on to the code that's got the quads, I don't think I'm going to go over this much because I've got a, another video I'll reference where I made quads. And the quad stuff is a little bit complicated and it didn't come out very well anyway, so I think I'm just gonna skip talking about the quad. So that leaves the version with the Perl and noise. I decided not to create yet another resolution and noise value uh, for the Perl and noise. Um, I am just using the Perl and noise I already had for determining the color. So if we look at the add layer section, first we're going to create an invisible canvas with create graphics. And because I'm using those curved vertexes to create the layers, uh, they're larger than the screen is. So I actually have to create graphics that is larger than the screen. And then I'm going to fill the curved vertex with a color just to start with before I do the Perl and noise. And the curved vertex is being drawn on that invisible canvas, not on the regular canvas yet. And then for the Perl and noise, I'm loading pixels on that invisible canvas, uh, changing the pixels, updating the pixels. Uh, I'm using the noise value. And instead of just using the straight noise value, I've decided to multiply it by 0.75 and then add 0.25. And what this does is if the noise value turned out to be zero, then there would be no RGB uh, being put into this pixel. But I wanted to have a little bit of color. So I'm making sure that there's at least a quarter of the color is gonna be there to start with. So you're going to wind up with 25% uh, to 100% of the R, G, and B for this Perl and noise field. So after I've created the curve vertex and put the Perl and noise on, then I'm going to put my invisible canvas onto the regular canvas. Then for the circles, I was just drawing a circle in the main code, but because I'm doing this Perl and noise circle now, I decided to make a function just for that. So in the main code, it's going to be adding circles in those five areas of the canvas, partly on randomness and partly based on the Perl and noise field, whether it's in a low or a high area of Perl and noise. So then we're calling the make circle function on the X and Y. And these various X and Y coordinates are being uh, picked at the beginning of the code uh, based on those different areas of the canvas. So this x2, y2 is the top left section of the canvas. So then when it's adding circles, it calls the make circle function for the x2, y2 based on this big if statement. So now we go to the make circle function. We're bringing the x and y coordinate in here. We calculate the diameter of the circle. Then we're going to create graphics, create an invisible canvas. Um, now I am creating this invisible canvas the size of my regular canvas. We'll get our color, we'll fill the color. This is very similar to what I was doing with the layers. We're going to put in our circle and then we're going to load the pixels. And remember all of this is happening on our invisible canvas. Just like before we're coming up with a noise value and replacing the pixels. Uh, in this case, I wanted the circles to be a little bit brighter than the layers. So I'm doing the noise value plus 0.25. So they're going to wind up being a little bit brighter than they normally would. 
then I update the pixels, and then once I've done all that, then I place my image onto the regular canvas. Now what I tried to do with this circle is I tried to make a small canvas. Let me show you some other code. This is another version of the code that instead of creating graphics with the height and width of my entire canvas, I'm only creating graphics for the diameter of the circle that was decided here. And then I'm changing all my code so that I'm just using the diameter of the circle. But for some reason, this did not work. I, uh, I don't know what I'm doing wrong here, but uh, it was not giving me Perlin noise in the circle. So here's an example of that code, and you can see that we do have Perlin noise in this layer, but when we look at this circle, it doesn't have any Perlin noise. It's just a flat color. So I don't know what the issue was, but it does work if I make the invisible canvas the same size as my regular canvas. So I think that's everything that I wanted to go over with you with the code. I hope this made some sense. I've had a lot of fun playing with this whole flow packing thing, and I'm ready to move on to something else. So if you've liked this video, please give it a like. Consider subscribing to the channel. Ring the bell for notifications. Comments are always welcome. Love to read your comments. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye now. Steve's Makerspace.